I'm Alexandra Kingston. I'm a comparative neurobiologist and an assistant professor here at the University of Tulsa. My colleagues and I are very excited to share with you our new work about the helmet-like orbital hoods of snapping shrimp and their ability to protect these animals from shock waves. Orbital hoods are transparent extensions of the carapace, or the shell, that grow forward to cover the eyes and head of these animals. We use behavioral trials and pressure sensing to address our questions about the protective qualities of the orbital hood. To perform our behavioral trials, we asked if snapping shrimp can seek shelter normally without experiencing disorientation or loss of motor control following exposure to shock waves. Snapping shrimp are very motivated to seek shelter, so we give them these artificial burrows in order to ask this question. We use groups of snapping shrimp that either had their orbital hoods surgically removed or that had their orbital hoods unaltered. Then, we expose snapping shrimp to shock waves. Snapping shrimp whose orbital hoods we surgically removed took significantly longer to find their burrows and often displayed evidence of disorientation and loss of mo motor control. To better understand what happens to shock waves as they interact with orbital hoods, we use miniature pressure sensors with our pressure sensors running and our conspecific snapping at our experimental individual, we can record one shock wave two times, once from the outside of the orbital hood and once from the inside of the orbital hood. From this measurement, we can take the difference between our sensors to ask whether or not the orbital hood has an effect on the shock wave. What we find is that the pressure that reaches our sensors inside the orbital hood is much lower than the pressures that we detect outside of the orbital hood. When we leave our sensors in place in our experimental individual, but we surgically remove the orbital hood, we find that there's no difference between the sensors. We further tested whether or not the carapace, or the shell, is capable of dampening shock waves. So we move our pressure sensors to the carapace that covers the gills. When we have our conspecific snap at this individual, we no longer see a difference between the sensors, meaning that the carapace itself is not capable of dampening shock waves. Once we learned that orbital hoods are capable of dampening shock waves and functioning as a helmet to protect the brains of these animals from the shock waves they produce with their claws, we wanted to know how. So we spent a lot of time trying to understand some of the properties of the orbital hood. And one of the things that we found is that the orbital hood is open at the interior and just beneath the eyes. This allows water to flow between the interior surface of the orbital hood and the eyes. So we hypothesized that orbital hoods may function to dampen shock waves by allowing water to be expelled from the interior opening of the orbital hood. This would transfer kinetic energy from the shock wave to the water held beneath the orbital hood. When this happens, the kinetic energy is transferred to hydraulic energy that forces water out of the orbital hood, redirecting and releasing the energy of the shock wave away from the eyes and the brain of the snapping shrimp. To test this idea, we glued orbital hoods closed just at that anterior margin. When we place our pressure sensors in an individual that has had its orbital hood glued closed, we no longer see differences between the internal and external sensors, suggesting that the energy from the shock wave is not dampened by the orbital hood when water cannot be expelled from the system. We learned that orbital hoods dampen shock waves, and by doing so, they protect the brains of snapping shrimp from blast-induced neurotrauma. What's really exciting is that this is the first biological armor known to dampen shock waves. We have a long ways to go, but we're really excited to continue working on these questions.